All right, we have two cameras going. Uh, hi, I'm Melissa Brunk from um, Timeless Designs. I am the red shoe wearing interior designer because there is no place like your home. Um, and we pride ourselves on uh, exclusive concierge interior design services uh, for busy career professionals um, and those that have retired um, because you're busy and we love design. So today we're going to chat about showers and what you need to ask your builder, architect, and design professional in preparing for your shower and then um, so then you can be sure that you have um, exactly what you want when it's all done. So we're going to talk about use, style and size, and then we're going to talk about plumbing. So we've kind of touched on a few of these things previously, um, but we're going to cover them again because it's always important. Okay, so use. So the number one thing to consider for your build or your renovation is what is the use for your shower? Is it purely utilitarian? Like, are you just showering? Or do you want a really great spa experience where um, this is like your, your time? You relax and you rejuvenate. Um, and so knowing exactly what you want out of your space is going to help you assist in what, um, what you're trying to accomplish. So um, do you want it to be a steam shower? Do you want it to be just a regular shower? Um, again, is it spa experience? Is it utilitarian? Are you just quick showering and then you got, got to get ready and get to work? Um, now, is it going to be a single user or a double user? Um, do you need one shower head or two? Do you want a rain shower head and a hand shower? Which, by the way, I, we talked about before, I always recommend a hand shower because um, cleaning is much easier with a hand shower. So that is um, things to think about, things to talk about with even your plumbing professional um, on that one as well. So item number two is going to be style and size. So not only tile, but the size of the shower itself. So again, if it's more of a spa experience and you know you have light therapy and you have um, steam, um, you're probably going to want it to be a little bit larger. Um, you, you don't want a really small shower because you know you have to move around in there. Um, a scale of tile, so there are really really large format tiles. Um, we're in the Midwest and so things are just starting to get to us, but there have been really large format tiles for many years on the coast and so um, those are are great. You, I mean, you have less grout joints, um, and you know it is really kind of a modern look. So if that's what you're going for, fantastic. Um, but you you probably don't want that in a smaller scale setting for a shower. Um, and then as far as accent tile, there are a bazillion ways to figure out accent tile. Um, if if that's if that's a piece that you're wanting to incorporate into your shower, um, this is a really fun way to add some some pizzazz and some character and some fun. Um, I tend to design um, spaces for clients that want a timeless look, hence the timeless designs. And so we don't do anything wild and crazy, but that would be if that's your thing, that would be a spot that you could add some you know wild and crazy and have some fun with it. Um, and then as far as style and size, is this going to be a walk-in shower or is it going to, um, have a curb? So I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Um, if you are having it just be purely a walk-in shower, you and your building crew need to determine how is that shower pan going to, um, work as far as the subfloor and the tile and how is that all going to go together. So there's a lot of planning ahead of time for that. Um, and then glass. If this is a walk-in shower where there is no glass, that's fine. Um, but if you are having shower glass, um, your building crew will need to put backer in depending on what kind of glass you're having. Um, but there's got to be something so that can be, you know, 
affixed to the wall uh, so it stays in place. So um, those are those are really, really important critical things to think about. Um, shower glass for sure. Uh, you don't want to have the tile all put in and then, oh my gosh, we need backer for the shower glass because nobody thought about that. So that is one thing that way in the beginning of planning that has to be talked about with the framing crew. Um, and then plumbing. We touched on this a little bit a couple of weeks ago, but since we're talking showers, we need to talk about it again. Um, the valve for turning on the faucet doesn't necessarily have to be underneath the shower head. So um, if you have a fairly large shower, you're probably going to want those valves right when you walk in. So you can turn that on and the tile can be warmed up and, <clears throat> you know, have a nice warm space to walk into rather than like run into the shower and turn it on and get, you know, blasted with cold water. Unless that's your thing. That's not my thing. Um, to each their own. But if you want to have a nice warm shower, um, I would suggest that highly. Uh, and then shower head height. So um, I think we talked about this in cabinetry in August. Um, it's your home. It's your space. And so if you are vertically challenged, have everything fit you. If you are very, very tall, then, you know, have those things fit you. So your shower head, um, when planning with your builder, architect, design, professional plumber, uh, if, if you want it higher, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's, it's done all the time. And so it's just a planning thing where if you want it more than a standard height, then you just plumb it in at a higher than standard height. So, um, those are the things that you really need to think about and consider for your showers, the use. Is it a steam shower? Is it just a shower shower? Is it a single use, double use? Um, you know, whatever, whatever it needs to be. Is it a spa experience? Those are kind of nice. Um, and then style and size. What size of shower do you have? The scale of your tile. Um, again, if you've got like a huge, huge, steam shower, you know, you maybe have smaller floor tile mosaic pieces, but then overall you don't have an entire room of one by one tile because that would just be way busy um, and and too much. <laughs> um, and then accent tile, walk-in shower, floor pan. Now the floor plan, uh, floor, floor pan, uh, I forgot to mention earlier, uh, there are a multitude of shower pans and how to get your shower floor. Um, there are pre-made, there are, you pour them in place, um, waterproofing, I guess that could be topic number four, we'll just squeeze that in as like 3B. Um, waterproofing is, is like key for your shower because uh, obviously water and wood and rot and mold and mildew, you, you want to, you know, mitigate those things. Building in general is mitigation of water. End of story, period. So especially in your shower, you want to make sure, very important, that you are waterproofing, not you, but your design professionals are waterproofing um, so that your shower will last forever and always look great. So um, I always specify Schluter. They are uh, one of the largest companies that provide the materials to um, building professionals and it's orange. So if you walk into your shower and, uh, or into your bathroom while they're working on it and there's orange everywhere and you think, oh my gosh, that is not my tile. Don't worry. It is just in place of, uh, drywall rock or other products. Uh, the Schluter is what is put in place as a tile backer. So, um, there's a whole process to waterproofing that. Uh, you can waterproof the ceiling. Obviously, if you have a steam shower, that is going to be immensely critical. Um, so waterproofing is really important as far as like style and size and, you know, 3B option number four that we're talking about. I didn't put it on my checklist. Um, and then plumbing. Where do you want your valve? and um, shower head height, where are you wanting that to be um, based on your comfort level? You know, standard, maybe 
perfect for you, maybe higher, maybe lower. Um, and then just really always consider putting in that hand shower. Um, there's a little more investment cost to it because you have another fixture, but I highly, highly recommend anytime you do a shower, um, a kid shower, a guest shower, a primary shower, any of those, really, really consider putting in a hand shower um, just for ease of cleaning and ease of use. So um, next month we are talking about family rooms, family rooms. So we're going to have all kinds of topics. We're going to talk about family rooms. Let me see, maybe I can give you a sneak peek. Um, upholstered furniture. If you need furniture in two years, order now. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, and then case goods, we'll talk about layout, so space planning. Um, space planning is, is really important when it comes to uh, any room because you want to make sure that it flows and it functions. And uh, then we'll talk about special features, so some more tips and tricks of the trade. Um, do I have a tip for today? The tip and the trick of the trade today is a hand shower in the shower. So there you have it uh, until next week. Um, that is what we have for all things shower for tiled showers. <laughs>